The main cast of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 3 Stardust Crusaders all play a unique and important role for the story. Well, I mean all of them besides Kakyoi. Be it Jotaro, who is the protagonist, or Joseph, who's the navigator and veteran warrior. You even have slapsticky characters like Polnareff, who are also secondary protagonists in their own right. And even Iggy, who is an unwilling hero at first, but is also the mascot for the Crusaders. Though, the most important role for the crew actually falls into the lap of the second-in-command. This being the role of the mentor, which carries with it all the consequences and sacrifices that we've seen throughout all of JoJo. And Consequences and sacrifice are words that best describe Muhammad Abdal and his stand, Magician's Red. Now, Muhammad Abdal isn't the only mentor in Part 3, you also have Joseph for that role, but his role as a mentor in the story cannot be denied, given that he gives life advice to the other Crusaders, along with acting as a pillar for the crew to rely on when they need to. Along with this, he's also sort of a mentor for the readers, as Abdal helps shine light on new aspects brought up in Part 3, be it reinforcing the dangers of Dio, the main antagonist for the part, along with being the introduction for stands not only in the part, but also in the entire series. Series. Though, before we get too into that, we should actually discuss the meaning behind his name. Muhammad Abdul is a name that is directly inspired by Paula Abdul, an American singer, dancer, and choreographer, specifically for the Jackson 5. It was actually in her years of working with the Jackson 5 that allowed Paula to establish a name for herself. Starting first as a cheerleader, she was later scouted in life to become the choreographer for a multitude of the Jackson 5's music videos, until later in life she decided to move on to her own career. But when the character Abdal was created, Abdul was only known for her choreography work. This aspect of her life translates really well to Avdal as a character, be it that he is second in command, and Araki said that he wanted to make Avdal someone who the entire crew could rely on when they needed to, even giving him an older appearance to make him seem more experienced in comparison to those around him when he honestly wasn't that much older than them. He also made him a fortune teller so he would have the credibility of reading people along with being less emotional than the bunch, but also his fortune telling ways would help him guide the crew, even going so far to allow Avdal to name Jotaro's trademark Mark Stand, along with teaching him how to use it correctly. So in a way, Abdul is sort of the Crusader's own choreographer. Along with this, he was given the name Muhammad because it was a common Arabian or Middle Eastern name, much like Abdul, which also means praiseworthy one or one who deserves praise, which plays directly into his tarot card's meaning, this being the Magician's card. As the Magician's Tarot is a card which directly means one will find success through their talents or actions, and that one should never hold back in their pursuit of success. Avdal shows this in many of his fights, always being able to pull his desired results out of people by using his stand to bend his enemies to his will, and this stand being Magician's Red. Magician's Red is a humanoid stand with a bird aesthetic, most notably a large bird head, which Araki says the reason he went with this design is both to play in the fire elements of his ability, being that he based a lot of the design around a phoenix, but also because he wanted Avdal's stand silhouette to stand out from the group, so everyone would have their own unique and recognizable profile. Along with this, he claims that the works of Ikin Bal, I assume specifically the character of Horus, were a direct influence on the design of Magician's Red, which makes sense given that Araki at the time was really interested in Egyptian culture. Now, stats-wise, Magician's Red has a B in destructive power, B in speed, C in range, B in durability, C in precision, and D and developmental potential. Now ability wise, Magician's Red has one major ability, that being Supernatural Flame Manipulation. Supernatural Flame Manipulation allows Avdal to create and control fire through Magician's Red. This is no ordinary flame though, as the flame that is produced is exclusively made by Magician's Red, meaning that it is stand flame and invisible to non-stand users. This is because Avdal is in complete control of all aspects of this flame, allowing him to make the fire so hot that it can flash melt metal, or so much that it doesn't even burn people. Along with that, he can manipulate its intensity, shape, and size. And with this complete control over it, he has created a multitude of tricks and attacks to use against enemies. Starting first with Red Binds, which is a non-burning flame rope which binds a target, wrapping the flame so close to their face that it begins to suck the oxygen out of the surrounding areas, allowing Avdal to suffocate and subdue the target without having to completely scorch them. Then you have Avdal's key move, which is the Crossfire Hurricane 
which creates a hurricane of flames that can launch out flaming onks at its target. These flaming onks have massive destructive capabilities, though it does have a variant which allows Avdol to reduce the destructive power by splitting the single onk into multiple onks, and this can be as many as Avdol wishes, allowing him to cover more area, but do a little bit less damage, though if at any point he wants to, he can bring all the onks back together for a massive surprise attack, because Avdol's flames don't dissipate like regular flames. We also see that Avdol focused on non combat based abilities as well, like shaping his flames into functioning clocks and his life detector ability, which allows Avdol to create a heat radar which flickers in response to heat signatures within its range. This allows Avdol and his crew to hunt down and eliminate hidden enemies. Lastly, the flames of Magician's Red don't appear to work like regular flames, as it doesn't seem like you can suffocate the flame out, as Avdol is easily able to send the fire underground without any sign of weakening the flame. But it's also shown that water can and put out the fire during his fight with Jotaro, but this could also just be the fact that the flames of the Red Bind were incredibly weak, and that if Avdol wanted to, he could possibly make a flame so hot that it would evaporate water the instant it touched it. Now name-wise, Magician's Red obviously takes inspiration from the Magician's Tarot, which I explained earlier, but you also have his attack name, Crossfire Hurricane, which comes directly from Jumping Jack Flash, a song by the Rolling Stones, with the first line of the song being, I was born in a crossfire hurricane, which is a line that is directly related to Rolling Stones lead, Keith Richards, past, as he was born during the conflict known as World War II. Also, Araki enjoyed the song, Jumping Jack Flash, enough that he would bring it back later in Part 6 as a minor antagonist, though I really wish he didn't. Also, during his time in Part 3, Avdol played the role of the Reverse Magician, which is a card that means you trick or deceive others and confuse those around you. This moment is represented by Abdol faking his own death during the park, deceiving the viewer, Polnareff, and most importantly, the enemy. And he did this in order to purchase a submarine to allow the Crusaders to reach Egypt almost undetected. Though this isn't the only part of his character that reflects the reverse magician. Because you see, after Abdol fakes his own death, he goes through a really weird personality shift. He becomes more flamboyant and flashy and jokes and laughs around with the crew. This shift in personality is actually so apparent that even characters in universe, like Polnareff, ask him if the bullet did something to his brain. Even Abdul himself points out the strangeness, saying things like, this isn't me, and this is so out of character for me during the part, because it is. And this persona that Avdol puts up during the part seems to be tied to his feelings that he was out of place among the crew. Be it his straightforward personality clashing with the bombastic, wild personalities of everyone, or his lack of a connection to Dio versus everyone's personal attachment to him, Avdol feels like he is really out of place among the group, and tries to copy them to more fit in. Though, since this is a representation of the reverse magician, Avdol only isolates himself more in doing this. Though this all changes at the doorway to Dio mansion, as Avdol, before entering with Polnareff and Iggy, shatters this persona, and in doing so, he realizes that the crew cared for each other for who they are, not who they think the others would like. And in living up to his role as the only responsible one among the crew, Avdol makes the most Avdol decision, giving up his own life to save the others. Now, Avdol's deaths in part 3 are very important for setting a tone in the part, done to show the consequences of the world of stand battles, though I should clear up some information about his death. You see, Avdol was not brought back from the dead due to popular demand. In fact, according to Araki, Avdol was never a popular character among the popularity polls. Rocky even thinking most readers didn't like him all that much. He killed him off specifically to catch the reader's attention, and always planned to bring him back sometime later in the story. Though he never planned exactly when it would happen, he just knew that he wanted to bring him back in a flashy way. Rocky also explains that Avdol's shift in character was also done to try to grab the reader's attention, as he made him return in this flashy way, and made him act more like the other crusaders to try to get the readers to like him more. Though, even Araki has admitted that this could partly be due to the fact that he didn't use Avdol to his fullest extent, saying things like, Now that I think about it, since I killed him once, I probably should have made him more important in the story. Of course, these thoughts all come to me after I've already finished the story. Though there was another reason why Avdol wasn't actually used all that much, and that's because Magician's Red's ability was extremely powerful in Araki's opinion. Him even saying that he had to limit himself when writing Avdol, 
as the ability to just burn away one's problems was too all-powerful for him. So after Abdal, all fire abilities were off-limits to him, which might explain why certain abilities in future parts like Speed King are so massively limited. Abdal is one of the most important characters in Part 3, as his multiple deaths help develop the character of Polnareff while also helping the readers understand how dangerous stand fights can be. As you never expect someone like a main character to be killed off so soon in a manga, making his deaths appear shocking and sudden. And I would say I'd like to see Abdal expanded on more in things like the Steel Ball Run universe, especially since Rocky said he would like to cover Abdal's family life, but then you actually get his involvement in the Steel Ball Run universe, where he's shot dead almost right away. Guess old habits never die, but Abdal always will. And if you enjoyed this video and like to see more videos like in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash many not the bad guy. And if you want to split your enjoyment into multiple pieces, just like a crossfire hurricane, well, you can do so by buying a copy of Shimonetta, a boring world where the constant jokes doesn't exist, at buyshimonetta.com.